We'll call the September 20, 2021 meeting of the Greater Board of Public Works and Safety of Order at 5.30 p.m. Uh, Sonia, would you roll call, please? Oh, yes, Mr. Rutherford. Here. Mr. Hoover. Here. And uh, I'll make a note that Mr. Colbert is absent this evening. Thank you. So uh, just for the audience's note, um, since we only have two members, we both will have to agree on the disposition of any matter or it will not be uh, completed this evening. Uh, our first matter on our agenda is Renee Dunlap, homeowner for 1500 Harrison Drive. Uh, Ms. Dunlap, are you here in person or? Yeah, I'm right here. Okay. If you want to come up to the podium here and tell us what you. Oh, come ahead. Come ahead. We're going to. I skipped over something. Oh, right. Um, maybe you can okay. sit right there now. This is all new. I, I'm all flustered okay. today. Um, uh, the minutes have been distributed to members of the board. Any corrections, additions, or deletions from staff? I'll move for approval. I'll second that. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion right. passes. Now, Ms. Ben, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, but go ahead. You've got an encroachment request, I understand. Yep. Yeah. Um, I currently live at 1500 Harrison Drive. Uh, we moved in about three years ago. There is a fence that is currently there. Um, I'm not sure how old the fence is, but um, it's a piece of junk, to be honest with you. So we're looking to replace a couple of uh, the north and the south side of it. Um, and then um, a little bit on the east side. Um, like I said, there is a current fence there. I did. I had to get the encroachment packet. I did send out all the information to all the utility companies and things like that. I didn't get any negative responses or you know, any dilemmas or anything like that. So um, I'm just applying to replace that fence for my service. <laughs> um, our engineering division staff has uh, prepared a memo to us uh, dated September 14, 2021. Did you receive a copy of that? Uh, it's got some recommended conditions um, that uh, our department is uh, considering. No, I don't remember seeing okay. that. Okay, I'm going to ask you some questions. Sure. Um, if the, uh, the request is approved, uh, one of the conditions is that the fence be constructed to allow for adequate drainage. Uh, and if it's determined by the engineering division or our stormwater department, uh, that a drainage issue has been created, then you will be responsible to correct that drainage issue. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then if also, if, if there's any work that needs to be done within that easement uh, by any of the utilities or the city, uh, you would be responsible for uh, removal and replacement of that fence at your expense. Um, and you would further hold us harmless or any of those utilities for any damage to that uh, encroachment. And then finally, one of the conditions is the Indiana uh, 811 is notified prior to you uh, installing anything into that. Um, mm -hmm. And you're agreeable to all of those conditions. Should yes, that should be made. Um, any further questions for Ms. Dunlap? All the appropriate. Okay. I will second that. Further discussion? Seeing that all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passed. Thank you. Well, thank you. Good luck. Good evening. Thank you. <laughs> Next, Ann and Ken Fultz, uh, 1255 Blakely Drive. Good evening. Good evening. What's your name? My name is Ann Fultz. Okay. And my husband, Ken, is over there. So. Um, tell us, we know that you've got a approach request as well. Tell us what you'd like to do. Uh, what we would like to do is actually add, and if you look at the diagram, we would be adding a 48 inch um, black aluminum fence um, from the southwest corner of our patio home out to the west and then down and across the back and attaching it to our neighbor already has a six foot um, privacy fence if there that's in yellow. And we're primarily doing that. We have a 80 pound black lab. Uh, so we want to be able to uh, let him out, especially in the winter, and avoid having to walk him. Um, we moved to Cricket Bend. Um, we purchased this home in May. So that's our um, desire. Not sure if you heard the uh, conditions that have been recommended for the previously had to You received that memo? Yes, we okay. received it earlier today. And you, uh, all those conditions, would you have any problems with any of those conditions? Yeah, we're fine with all of those conditions. Is there uh, any further questions for Ms. Fultz? Okay. Well, I'll move to the river. Yes. 
one question if I may. Just, just for clarification, you did say that your fence would tie in to your neighbor's fence. Would it be at that same corner? Yes, it'll okay. be at that corner where the yellow and the red comes together. Okay, so basically you would be about the same distance away from that concrete paved uh, swale. Here. Exactly, okay. yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, I'll move for approval subject to those three conditions. Second. Okay. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passed. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. Good evening. Appreciate it. I think we're going to uh, pass on the Light of Life Lutheran Church. I am here. Oh, you are here. Okay, great. Kevin, good to see you. Um, Thank you. Light of Life Lutheran Church uh, uh, out on Sheik Road has a uh, request for us. You want to tell us what you uh, like to do? So as part of the uh, church being built a few years ago, uh, there was a sidewalk that is in the southeast corner that, corner was, that not was, not, was not installed. We have now installed that sidewalk, and so we would like to have... Um, the acceptance of the improvement. Um, we have a maintenance guarantee that we have sent uh, to the to the to the team there, and also then a release of the performance guarantee. Um, as noted, there are a couple issues that we are working out with our insurance company to get the proper um, verbiage into the maintenance guarantee, and I am currently working with our insurance company to get those updated. But uh, we have sent a copy of that of the preliminary uh, maintenance guarantee and we're looking for those things to be accomplished. Daniel, I know that uh, Mr. Peone has spoken with uh, these folks and maybe a conditional approval might be something that would be a good for consideration. What is your take on that? Uh, yes, that's, that's correct. Uh, basically the, the motion would be for the approval uh, or the acceptance of the sidewalks in the public right of way. Uh, on Sheik Road and to accept a maintenance guarantee for the same and to release the performance guarantee. Uh, there is one condition that would be the receipt and review of the original revised maintenance guarantee. I'll move for approval of that uh, condition. I will second that. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Have a good evening. Thank you. Next, we have uh, 49 Mercator Drive uh, on our agenda. I understand there may be a, uh, is there any, Mr. Elko, are you here for either in person? I am actually online, sir. Okay, anyone else in the audience here to address this matter? I, I don't believe there's gonna be anybody else there to, okay. on, on this matter. So um, I had- uh, I'm five minutes. Sorry about that. I'm trying to turn off some volumes here. I got stuck in traffic, had to pull over and open up my laptop. Yeah. Um, so I got Daniel some information um, a little bit late, and I know that he was asking for um, us to be continued to October 4th. So I, I didn't know if I'd still have an opportunity to at least um, present, um, and then I can discuss the additional information that I had provided uh, to uh, uh to Daniel, um, in essence, the, the request is a waiver from the release rates uh, from the ordinance of the, uh, the, the current stormwater manual, uh, which is a, a 0.1 acre feet, uh, I'm sorry, 0.1 CFS per acre for the 10 year storm and a 0.3 CFS per acre on the 100 year storm uh, to do a 100 to 10, which is a post developed 100 year release rate for a to a predetermined or a uh, pre-developed 10-year release and then similarly the post-developed 10-year be detained to the pre-developed two-year um, and so the the site that is in question is at, at 49 Mercator uh, which is the southeast corner of Mercator and Madison kind of tucked in that that intersection of Madison and 31 just south of the roundabout with Smith Valley and Madison uh, it's the existing Lotus restaurant. Um, the, the site is uh, basically all impervious with the exception of a small acreage or small square footage uh, there on the eastern side um, that is, is grass. 
Uh, the, the goal of the project is to raise the existing restaurant, uh, demolish all the impervious parking, um, and then uh, construct Kapetsky's auto wash as, as identified on the title of the slide that, that you guys have up. Um, the, the challenge that we have and, and the, the unique situation that we have with this developed site obviously is that one, it is a developed site and that it has uh, a significant amount of impervious area on it. Um, inherent to the redevelopment of the site, we, we are drastically reducing the amount of impervious area, um, thereby just in, in and of itself, we're, we're reducing the release rate of the, um, of the discharge of rainfall from the site just by developing it, adding the grass, uh, including the islands. Um, so with that, uh, there's obvious improvements to the existing infrastructure about Mercator Drive, Madison Avenue uh, already. Uh, what we're proposing to do still though is provide detention, provide water quality uh, in conjunction with the stormwater manual uh, except for those release rates. Uh, your, the manual requires a channel protection volume, which is uh, a, a lower flow release rate that, that we're meeting uh, and the volume of detention required for that. Uh, but what we're proposing is to provide detention volume for the, the release rates of the 100 to 10, 10 to two. So it's a slight deviation, but we're still providing detention um, just at a different release rate. Um, in conversations with with staff leading leading up to this evening, um, it, it had been indicated that there there were other sites that that had implemented uh, or with a redevelopment had implemented some detention that that met ordinance. We've got some challenges with this site based on uh, the existing infrastructure that we're tying into, specifically the storm manhole uh, and the lowest point of. Uh, positive uh, release point that we have, uh, it, it really is dictating the elevations uh, of the site, where we can put detention and um, how, where, where even a, a system such as underground detention could go. Uh, the challenge that we have based on some manufacturers of underground systems uh, that, that would be conducive to this site uh, would require the site to be lifted uh, a couple feet in, in, in excess of two feet uh, to provide the necessary uh, sub base, the underground detention structure itself, and then the, the recommended or the required uh, cover over the detention system um, before we're paving. Uh, and, and like I said, that, that would raise the site a few feet. We've got some tie-in points at Mercator. We've got close proximity to the uh, existing property to the south, where we would be uh, getting some steep slopes uh, with, with that. Um, more importantly than that though, the, the detention or the release rate requirements that Greenwood has, if we, if we were to hold to a 0.1.3, um, we, we don't have enough room on site to provide enough chambers uh, to provide that amount of volume. So there, with, with the topographic and the, and the geometric shape of the property and the, and the layout of the site uh, in conjunction with just the sheer volume that the site would require, um, we're looking to get some relief uh, from a redevelopment aspect um, by not just negating detention altogether, but still providing it at a, at a release rate of 100 year post-developed to, to a pre-year 10, 10 year post-developed to a pre-year two. Um, we've made reference and, and I've talked to staff about policies that uh, similar jurisdictions have. Um, we, we did a, uh, a car wash design in the city of Franklin um, and just in their process, uh, we did something similar where it was raise a building, reconstruct a parking lot. We actually increased the um, uh, amount of pervious soil in the area, thereby decreasing the discharge rate. And in the city of Franklin, they actually negated the detention requirement altogether. Um, another um, firm, or I'm sorry, another municipality that we do a lot of work in and do actually drainage review for is the city of Carmel. Um, and the city of Carmel has uh, nothing to that extreme where they completely negate the requirement of detention but they implemented a policy 
uh, where is as opposed to a predetermined release rate exactly like what Greenwood has, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, they have implemented where those sites could take advantage of the existing uh, impervious area as far as calculating predetermined drainage rates uh, and allow those sites to release at the 100 to 10, 10 to 2. So there's some precedent set in, in surrounding jurisdictions on this. Um, and again, we're, we're, we're not looking to completely get rid of detention altogether. Um, we're, we're simply looking for uh, a modification of the allowable release rates. And to honestly, the 100 to 10 and 10 to 2 are the old Greenwood, City of Greenwood release rates uh, before the uh, manual was updated. Uh, Johnson County actually still uses 100 to 10, 10 to 2. So it, although it's not in your manual now and it's not your ordinance now, it's, it's still a, a, an industry standard, uh, if you will, in calculating detention. So that's where we're at. And I, I took a little bit more time than I wanted to take, but um, I, I will uh, be happy to answer any questions. I guess the, the, the other waiver that we were asking for was um, the relief of having an underdrain in a dry detention basin. So obviously, if if we're allowed, oh my apologies, if we're allowed to use the um, uh, release rates of the 100 to 10, 10 to 2, we would implement the dry basin as shown on the graphic, um, and it would discharge to the existing storm infrastructure there on the the northwest uh, corner of the property. Uh, the dry basin requires a subsurface tile. Uh, but again, elevations prohibit us from implementing uh, really anything that deep. Um, so what we would propose in lieu of the subsurface tile is the, uh, a paved side ditch in that uh, dry detention basin. So all that being said, I, I will be happy to answer any questions. Um, I certainly... Uh, understand Daniel's got uh, some information in front of him that he got late on at, at my own fault. So I will uh, be happy to answer any questions he may have also, but if, if we need to push this on, I just, um, the, the fact of the layout and the property we're we're to a point where the, the ordinance release rates make, make this site nearly undevelopable. Well, it, it makes it undevelopable. Um, the uh, with the building layout, there are some functionality issues that I've identified in our waiver request. There's there's a de-ice pavement section. There's um, uh, there's the vacuums that have sub base um, uh, pole bases and things where we we can't just put underground detention everywhere. Uh, we're we're very limited in where all that detention can go. So. Uh, and again, we, we just can't provide the amount of underground detention that the, the ordinance per the predetermined release rates um, allow. I know there's some discussion about, we've had a very comprehensive discussion just there, but a conversation about a continuance. I, what is, would be the need for, or the value of the continuance, Daniel? Uh, for us to review the information that, that Greg provided this afternoon. Uh, our questions uh, were specifically um, about asking for information on other uh, other uh, detention options that were uh, looked into. Uh, and the ones he's mentioned? Uh, correct. So it, Greg, is that information you know about raising the site and the various uh, underground chambers is that information in the, the info that you provided this afternoon? Yeah, the 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 elevation. I I didn't specifically give you any details of the of the chamber system that we had, but um, the the additional height that we were going to have to raise the site is identified in there. Um, the invert elevation of the structure uh, that we're tying into is, is identified. Um, Daniel also had asked us to look into a pipe system that runs east-west along our southern property. Uh, and unfortunately, that pipe system actually ties, it runs west and then north and ties into the manhole that we're, that we're proposing to tie into. So as I indicated, we're, we're proposing to tie into the lowest 
positive point possible uh, in the area. So the the southern pipe does not offer any any relief um, uh, that that would assist us in in meeting the uh, the sheer volume of detention uh, required. Um, as far as the the alternate methods, Daniel, I, I mentioned in my email, uh, it, it gets down to the numbers it, it, and and the elevations um, to where we can't go deep enough um, because of the the tie-in point, uh, and we can only raise the site so much before we're really we're we're drastically imp impeding um, the uh, the constructability as we tie into Mercator and and uh, have that property to the south of us that we're tying into as well and there's utility poles and things back there as well but um so you know whether we do a concrete vault system or or a uh a poly hdp uh storm tech type chamber uh or um, uh yeah storm tech type chamber uh the volume can't be provided with with this layout that we've got and with the functionality again uh we, we've got the vacuum poles that prohibit underground detention in in those areas we've got de-ice uh and some thawings uh some thermal components in the concrete both exiting and leaving um the car wash that prohibit us from putting any deten underground detention in those areas uh and then the canopy for the pay station we've got foundations for that we can't put any detention there uh, so the the small areas that we have for um, underground detention would not equate to the ordinance required volume. Well, what about the uh, vacuum areas? Is there any ways that, that can be reduced a little bit? It seems like there's a lot of vacuums there. I've been to your been to the Quebec out on 135. I always thought it seemed like most of those weren't used, but. Uh, I may be, you know, uh, speaking from. <laughs> yeah, their their expectation. Oh, my grade, yeah. <laughs> their 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 expectation is for for those to to all be used, and they do have circumstances when even at the one at one thirty five, uh, they they are full. Um, so the and the the use and the, and the feasibility or the viability of the of the product requires and, and necessitates uh, the the vacuum stations and stalls that they've got identified. Okay, well, it sounds to me, Greg, that the things you've shared with Daniel of late, they're not going to work anyhow. I mean, what what he's asking you is not going to work. What you're saying, correct? I, I'm saying, yeah, we, we've got a, a constraints on the site where underground, an underground system is, is not going to meet the volume requirements um, that Greenwood currently has, the, the, as far as those Greenwood release rate requirements. So that's, that's why we thought, okay, if we're doing this redevelopment, we, we would still provide detention, but just kind of yeah. modify the release rates a little bit. Terry? Terry? I'd like to hear it. <laughs> Really Good afternoon, Chairman Wall from Deputy Mayor for the City. Uh, you know, I, I guess I, I, we're the city Greenway, and you know, I, I hear all about Carmel and the different things that I've read. But to me, that doesn't pertain to this whatsoever. It should be what the City of Greenwood's requirements are. Uh, and would I, as much as I would like to see Kopeskis come to the City of Greenwood. This, this side of Greenwood is the fact of, it really sounds like this site does not fit this business as much as I hate saying that. Because I, I, I'm not a PE, but when we put these things out, when we when we take buildings down and stuff, they're supposed to abide by the, the requirements. That's the whole part of it. And I get there's always some things that might or might not work, but. I don't want to hear what Carmel does or whatever, because again, I feel that's what we ask. And I will, you know, regardless one way or, or another, there's already been several, I believe, waivers given, and we're asking for two more here. I don't know the exact number from the other meetings I've been in. Maybe Greg can help me on this. I think we're at maybe seven or nine, probably. And that's why I'm saying I don't know if this is the right side. For Kopetsky's in the city of Greenwood. So, go ahead, Greg. 
I, I was just going to say there there were some development standards variances that that were uh, obtained um, earlier on by by the owner. So, um, if if I may, I, uh, first I guess um, I I certainly didn't mean to reference the other cities in that they you you need to do what they do. I, I simply reference them uh, as as a a guide in that this is what other engineering uh, departments are are doing. Um, so, and again, I, I certainly understand Greenwood is going to do and, and wants to do what, what Greenwood wants to do. I, I guess with, with where we're at now, then, um, if, if I could go ahead and, and ask for that continuance, I will work with Daniel uh, to provide uh, additional information um, and make sure what, what I did provide him is sufficient. Um, and if not, we'll we'll take the time over the next couple of weeks to uh, uh, allow him to to make uh, his his educated decision on on the uh, waiver request. Will there be sufficient time between now and the October fourth meeting to have those conversations and exchange of information? Yes, I think so. Well, Greg, if that's your request to continue this, and I don't think there's any objection from the city on that continuance. Um, I didn't obtain a motion for a continuance. So moved. I'll second that. Further discussion? Hearing that all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Greg, I guess you're still with us for the next right. matter on our agenda. I am sitting in the parking lot waiting for all these to go through. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Ray Gilman Hyundai, uh, the 2021 East Display Lot Improvements. What are we doing there? So in, in this instance, what we're doing, uh, Ray Gilman is uh, proposing to uh, resurface and mill and overlay areas of their Eastern Display Lot at the uh, Hyundai um, on uh, at the southwest corner there of US 31 and April Drive. So we've, we're through the process of a, a type two LAP um, and we're coordinating uh, for a street cut right away cut. We have approved bond estimates through engineering office. Um, so what tonight was uh, Paul Pioni uh, put us on the agenda and we appreciate him doing that uh, to basically uh, I, I'm assuming, and I don't know if it's Paul or Daniel who's going to speak, but it conditional approval of the of the performance bonds. Um, the the one question that I've got, and and I was talking with my client today because he's talked to three different insurance companies so far, and two of them are not messing with bond estimates of the amount that we're looking at. Uh, the 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 estimates that we did. Um, were erosion control, uh, basically some silt fence and inlet protection um, and some seating. And then we also had a little bit of dirt work. Uh, the bond estimates came out to be total like $3,500. Um, now this, the, the city of Greenwood has templates for letter of credit and for bonds. And the client is inquiring, trying to get maybe can we cut a check for the $3,500, but based on uh, the client also talked to Paul earlier today um, to get um, Paul indicated that the city's uh, eliminated that as, as an option because of just the hassle with the checks. But I, I will say that the, the client is having a, a struggle getting a bond secured for such a low amount. Uh, at this $3,500. So I guess I'm looking for some suggestions. Obviously, the, the, the purpose of the approval is to have at least the bond amounts and, and the uh, assurity um, uh, process approved through the Board of Public Works while we work through uh, the agencies to, to the engineering department's satisfaction. Um, but I don't know, Daniel, if Paul filled you in at all or if Paul's there or online, um, we're where it stands if there's a possibility to cut a check. The reason for the uh, bond requirement is not the inconvenience of the checks, it is the um, cash deposit. It would be an asset of a receiver or a bankruptcy if the contractor went under. And we don't want to be in a position of returning the money because uh, it belongs to somebody else. 
the bond would always be outside of receivership or a bankruptcy. Uh, the amount of this is kind of small to have this fight, but I just wanted to make clear that we're, this isn't a convenience issue. There's actually a basis for it. Dan, I mean, so some of, uh, some of the work will involve involved or will occur within the, uh, the public right away there and that, right. would, that would be possible for the petitioner to request a right away permit a right away permit does have a, uh, a bond involved with it uh, that could then potentially cover the work i guess that's a, a, a very very broad uh, definition or application of how that bond would apply to it uh, but it would potentially be easier for a petitioner to get uh, that type of a bond, an excavation bond associated with a right away permit, uh, if they are having issues uh, as they described. Well, I guess I'm of the mind that that's a technical matter that you guys can, can get sorted out. I mean, from the board's perspective, uh, we're willing to accept uh, the performance guarantee of whatever form you can get. Um, worked out, but that those the form of those guarantees uh, have to be acceptable to um, the engineering department and the legal department. We we are completely acceptable that, and I I greatly appreciate this being moved forward. Okay, I and mean, I think that's a fair. I would make that motion, and we accept the performance guarantees in some form, uh, but that those uh, receipt of those guarantees be subject to approval by the legal department and the uh, engineering division of the city. Second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Greg, are you going to do the next one too? For... I, I'm, I'm hoping that these next two are the quickest of them. <laughs> so are we. Go ahead. Uh, so the, the first one is uh, acceptance of a performance bond release of a previous performance bond that was issued uh, for a, a development plan that was revised, um, and then the acceptance of the inspection and testing agreements. Uh, the, the property is the Schwartz Crossing Commercial Subdivision, um, situated uh, at the southeast corner of Stones Crossing in 135. Um, help me, I, I believe, with, I, I have the agenda here, which is for, is it the flats first or is it the subdivision first? I apologize. Subdivision. The subdivision. Okay. So there, there's uh, the, the project came through a few years back um, and we got to the point of bond acceptance and inspection testing agreement approvals and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then it, uh, it, the, the construction of it kind of lagged as known users really got solidified. So what has happened since that time is that uh, we've got a multifamily uh, development coming in and that's that's the next on the agenda um, is they came in and their layout and that use that necessitated kind of a, a redesign of a lot of the general infrastructure of the commercial subdivision. So what we've done is gone through, made the modifications, and we are now cleaning up the performance bond. And that's that's what we're asking for that to be accepted based on the approved uh, uh, revised estimate amounts uh, for that surety. And then in conjunction with that, we're asking for the previous ones uh, to be released, obviously. Uh, and then we have the inspection and testing agreement there to go with it. Greg, I think maybe we're all on the same page. Daniel, this is a Fairly straightforward, you know, even though it's lengthy in number, there's uh, we're accepting uh, performance letters of credit and releasing the other uh, letters of credit. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I'll move for approval uh, based on Alpioni's uh, recommendation. Of the... I will second that. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Now let's go on to the uh, flats. Yeah, so the, the so the flats, which is the the catalyst of the original uh, or the previous uh, ask. Uh, this is simply a multifamily uh, development within the Schwartz Crossing Commercial Subdivision. Uh, gone through the development plan approval process, have the surety uh, estimates approved. Uh, 
bond amounts have uh, been submitted. Uh, so we're asking performance bond rather. So we're asking for the approval of the bonds and uh, also approval of the acceptance and the acceptance of the inspection and testing agreement. Sam and Daniel, this is, we're all on board with this and the timing of everything. Okay. Uh, I'll make the motion set forth, uh, recommended to Paul Peony September 20th memo to us. Second. Further discussion? Seeing now, favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much, all. Now you got Greenwood Senior Housing. Are you going to do that or is? I got Dustin Myers in the house there. I believe Dustin is there. He is. <laughs> I'll be on mute. Good evening. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Good evening, Dustin. Good evening. Thank you for bearing with Ray during this uh, <laughs> speech. No problem. <laughs> so, uh, this evening I'm here to discuss a uh, waiver request for detention. In the specific uh, waiver is of Chapter Three, Chapter Four, and Chapter Seven of the current uh, City of Greenwood uh, Stormwater Technical Standards. Uh, the project, as you can see here, is located. Uh, within block three of the Grove Stones Crossing, uh, right at the northeast corner of Grove Crossing Boulevard, off, off, excuse me, Hearth Grove Drive. Uh, there are currently three existing ponds within this development. Uh, this development actually went through the design of the public process in Johnson County back in 2007. The city annexed this area in 2010. And then uh, the, the standards at the time were one and the same. As Brady alluded to earlier, it was a 100 year post developed to a 10 year pre developed, a 10 year post developed to a two year pre developed. So, what our request is this evening is to maintain these current ponds as designed and approved through the county with the same standards of the city of Greenwood at the time. Um, into just to maintain the overall drainage infrastructure within this development and not have to improve it to current city standards. And we have a memo from Paul, which uh, seems to recommend uh, approval of that waiver request. That's correct, because as Dustin mentioned, it was constructed in the Johnson County requirements. And Dustin, if you could correct me if I'm wrong from our prior discussions, uh, your design is also going to be reducing the amount of runoff? That is correct. It will reduce the amount of runoff per the approved plans back in 2007. I'll move for, for approval based on Paul Pionis' recommendation. I'll second that. Further discussion? Seeing then, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Dustin. Next, we'll go to Rice Commercial District, Jeremy Haynes. I'm uh, not Jeremy, I'm Jim Sapp. Jeremy works in our construction department. Uh, yeah, I thought we, I brought some help. Um, the city planning office has asked for trees over your sanitary, uh, 16 of them. Is anybody from city planning here or online? Well, I think Mr. Johnson recommend and represent the city on the engineering side of it. We'll do the rest of it. My name is Jim Sapp. I'm the owner of Rice Commercial uh, out on Christie Drive. We've been with the city for three years. We're trying to expand four buildings. Uh, in front of us, in front of the red line you see, is uh, the easement where the sanitary runs. And with the city's new zoning, they want us to put in a total of 79 trees on three and a half acres, all out front. And 16 of these trees are over your sanitary. I know this is unusual, but I'm asking that you say no. I don't believe that you should put trees uh, 10 foot over your sanitary easement. Uh, I think that's very problematic with having trees and bricks only 10 feet from the sanitary. Um, if you approve it, I have a hard time replacing trees if you go in there and have to fix something in the sanitary. I just don't think it's making sense that we put trees over a sanitary. We develop in the Midwest, and I agree with you. Your 
it says not to put trees over a sanitary easement. And the new planning regulations that you brought in, I think in October, wants all these trees. We're on Airport Park right here. So I recommend that you do not approve this. Well, if we don't approve it, where does that take this? So, because, that, so yeah, I guess, uh, I guess so there are, uh, and I'm, I'll have to defer to the planning staff in terms of the requirements uh, for landscaping uh, in this area uh, and the, the prior discussions. Um, for the information, my understanding is that uh, Jeremy of your company requested the approval for the Board of Works for uh, to construct the landscaping in the two easements on the east side and the north side of the property, as you have shown uh, in the graphic there. Um, that's the, the, the Dell Davis asked us to put the 79 trees in, and he's the one that asked us to put them in the easement. So and he had Jeremy make the application to you. So that he did ask Jeremy to make the application. I'm not sure what the, you know, what if you deny it, I don't know what planning will do. They may want the trees somewhere yeah, else. I can't speak if there, I can't make a recommendation to the board if there happens to be a landscaping easement. Uh, I mean, I guess. No, I think it's a sanitary easement that they want them over. Is well, it? I understand, but it, there is also a, a landscaping adjacent. Landscaping easement that these trees could go in, or would, would your would your site design be able to revise to provide that landscaping easement? Is that is that a possibility? So um, it's I, really pushing our limits. Having the seventy nine trees, the sixteen of them over the sanitary. We're simply asking not to put the sixteen trees in. That would that would eliminate. We'd still have sixty two trees on three and a half acres, and most of the property, you know, is building in asphalt. It is a long airport. The buildings across the street that are within the last two years don't haven't had to put this in. Jim, I appreciate the situation. Then you've got one of your employees that made a request of us based on what has been told uh, or what you guys have been told by another division of the city. Um, and I, I think maybe at the best, we not make a, a decision this evening and let you guys sort out what in the world it is that uh, it, you want if you're going to go back to the plan commission, Mr. Davis, uh, and get some a different direction from that. Uh, um, we've been trying to get permits to start construction for about three months, and Dale Davis said uh, we needed to come here. He's not being very flexible with the trees on airport, um, so I don't mean to be rude, but I'm asking that you deny it. And then if Dale can find a place for trees that are going to live, then you can find them. Or, I well, don't know the solution. I think it's unreasonable to ask for 79 trees. And that's not, I hope you understand. That's, not, not, sure. that's not our, not I'm our asking you to vote. I think Dale's being pretty new. It's an unreasonable request of the new zoning rules. And he told us very directly several times to come and ask for the encroachment. And we don't think we should because we think it's a poor decision with the trees. Well, if you don't want to uh, request the encroachment, I think we can grant that request. Yeah. That, that I'm just asking you to deny. deny it. I'll move to deny. Thank you. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Good. That doesn't change what he's. Would you be able to modify your motion such that the petitioner would go back to the planning staff to coordinate where uh, landscaping requirements would be live with elsewhere on the plan? And I think that's what I was trying to suggest, oh, okay. but, yeah. but that, I mean, he's got to comply with what the plan commission has told him. Um, until he gets that change, he's asked to, for us to take away the encroachment request. So that's the motion on there. I think the ball is now back in your court, as, as difficult as that may be, uh, from your perception. Right. Um, but if you say no, I think that's great, and we will deal with Dale and what they want. And there's really no room uh, for these 16. Um, that's what put it behind the buildings. Well, and that may, that may be a yes. Well, option, so we just don't know about. Down on the south side. So I think this is the step he wanted to 
us to go through. I don't want to waste your time, but right. and, and I don't I don't want to. I mean, I think the motion is made and seconded. We can vote on that. But I think implicit in that, uh, even though it's not specifically our motion, you're going to have to address what you've got left with the plan commission. And we will. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing that all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you. The motion passes not motion so. passed the denying the approach request. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Karen Collins. Madison. Ms. Collins, are you with us? I am. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. How can we help you? Well, um, we are looking for approval on the Madison flat, which um, this is, this shows some of the, the right of way or streetscape improvements along Madison and Meridian. Um, Serena Way is on the, on the right side of your page. Um, that's the north end. And then Smith Valley Road is on the south end. So we're looking for approval on um, the flat to, um, that will carve this this out for six lots and then um, block um, C, block B, and block F, um, which is all part of the a, a new development that will be going in for um, townhomes, a parking garage, um, some multi-use buildings, um, and um, some apartment buildings. So okay. this. I don't know. So uh, the recommended request is to accept and execute the plat subject to review of that revised final plat that you've got, uh, Mr. Johnson. And I'll make that motion. So further discussion? Seeing that, I'll favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Does anyone from the audience wish to address us? See that? Mr. Hudson, IDM looks good. Um, we're current with IDM reports and all as well with our um, directions for IDM. Thank you. I understand you may have a walk on? I do. Um, at the last council meeting that's introduced, we have uh, the city needs to do a general obligation bond in that amount of $7.6 million to capture revenue um, that resulted from increased uh, assessed value. Um, in order to do the bond, uh, uh, we need to hire professionals. Um, what's before you tonight is a uh, engagement letter to hire the TAP law firm to be the bond counsel for the city, uh, and these under the same terms and conditions as the 2020 GEO bond, um, with the exception of, of this bond is a flat fee of fifty thousand dollars. I believe last year's bond was forty-five thousand dollars. And this is a. Uh, uh, Request for approval of the addendum for the 2021 GEO bonds to be signed by the mayor. Is that correct? Correct. So moved. Second. Further discussion. Saying that, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Anything else, Sam? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Daniel. Your office. Good evening. How about a number of items? First is uh, Burger King, so pretty straightforward. This is just Accepting performance guarantee. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, accepting the performance guarantee for uh, dirt work, storm sewer, brush control, street sidewalks, signs, monuments, and to accept and execute the general inspection testing agreement and to ratify the acceptance of the fifty percent upfront fee for this project. So moved. Second. Further discussion. Hearing now all favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Next is for the term code. Uh, the northwest corner of Maine and Graham. Uh, this is to accept performance guarantees for dirt work, storm sewer, erosion control, sanitary sewer, streets, sidewalks, signs, and monuments to, to accept and execute general inspection testing agreements and ratify uh, the acceptance of 50% upfront fee. So moved. Second. Further discussion. Seeing that on the say aye. Aye. Motion passed. Next is for Elmwood Estates Section 2. Uh, this is to accept the performance bond 
For the discussion. Good men on favor say aye. 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 Passed. Next two items are uh, different projects, but similar. These uh, are both requesting to authorize the mayor and deputy mayor to sign on the board's behalf the ON manual for the water quality uh, for this project. The first one is Cherry Tree Log Section 5. So moved. Second. Further discussion? Mary Nan, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. And the second one, seeking approval for the ON manual to be signed by the mayor or deputy mayor on the board's behalf uh, is for Clearbrook Village. So moved. Second. Further discussion? Mary Nan, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. And then the last item that's actually a uh, mistake, my mistake is what we were setting up the agenda. That's not needed. The board took action on that back in the uh, May 17th meeting. So that issue has been resolved. So, Thank you. Anything else? That's all. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Evening. A couple of quick items for you. Uh, as Sam mentioned, we are looking at doing the geo bond issue. So the first item I have is with LWG to act as our financial advisor on those bonds uh, to be paid from the bond proceeds. I move for approval. That's presented. Second. Okay. Further discussion? Seeing that all in favor say aye. 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 The other item is with Baker Tilly um, for arbitrage monitoring service on the 2017 geo bonds. Uh, all of the proceeds from those bonds have been uh, spent, and as part of the closeout, the bank is requesting an arbitrage calculation, uh, basically for us to show the IRS that we have not earned uh, or an interest that we paid, we have profit off of the bond issue. Uh, that is not to exceed 3000 for that service. So moved. Second. Further discussion? Very now, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. I'll move for a verbal reply. Second that. So the discussion. Very now, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Ladies and gentlemen, we will stand adjourned at 6.22 p.m. Thank you all.